Hello, this is for ISOL 633 at the University of the Cumberlands. Textbook is Legal Issues in Information Security. This is for Chapter 9, State Laws Protecting Citizen Information and Breach Notification Laws. In the United States, there is currently no single comprehensive federal data privacy or security law. Instead, the United States has enacted industry-specific laws about security and privacy. These laws limit the use of personal information based on the nature of the data. State governments also have enacted their regulatory arena. States create data protection laws that are data-specific. Many states have created laws to protect health and financial information. They also might try to protect data in certain types of records, such as motor vehicle records. In some ways, states are more aggressive in trying to protect personal information than the federal government. This chapter will focus on state data protection laws. It includes laws from different states to give you an overview of the types of laws being passed to protect data. As you encounter issues regarding the law, security, and privacy, you must consider the impact of state laws and rules. So the learning objective for this chapter, describe state legal compliance laws addressing public and private institutions. The things and topics we'll cover include what the history is of state actions to protect personal information, what breach notification laws are, what state data specific security and privacy regulations are, what encryption regulations are, what data disposal regulations are, and what's the key concepts we will cover include state regulations of privacy and information security, state data breach notification, state encryption regulations, state data disposal regulations, and history of state privacy protection laws. So the choice point data breach. States have created many laws to protect personal information. California has worked hard to make laws to protect the security and privacy of its residents' data. It was this state's breach notification laws and a breach at a large corporation that led to the growth of data protection laws in many other states. ChoicePoint was a data broker. It merged public records, credit reports, and demographic data to create individual consumer profiles. It sold these profiles to government and private companies. People used the profiles to conduct background checks. ChoicePoint also sold profiles to insurance companies. They collected many different types of personal information. It had names, addresses, and social security numbers. Its databases also included credit history and DNA information. In February 2005, ChoicePoint notified 35,000 California residents that their personal data had been exposed in a data breach. California was the only state at that time with a data breach law, notification law. The law applied to many businesses that stored personal data at California residences, at res for California residents. The law required them to notify state residents of any security breach involving their in unencrypted personal information. Choice Point so said that it discovered the breach in late 2004. Law enforcement officials contacted the company about an identity theft ring. Choice Point learned that the criminals pretended to be its customers. In order to become a Choice Point customer, applicants had to provide proof of a lawful reason for buying consumer data. At the time of the breach, Choice Point had over 5,000 customers. They range from insurance companies to debt collectors. Choice point validation process didn't find the fake customers. Some of them provided suspect documents to Choice Point. 
For example, multiple businesses submitted documents with the same information. This should have raised red flags for more review. Choice Point later found over 50 fake accounts. These accounts had access to Choice Point's databases. The first Choice Point notified only California residents, residents affected by the breach. This is because it was the only state requiring such notification. 19 other states were outraged. The state attorneys general wrote a letter to Choice Point. They demanded that alert all people affected by the breach. Choice Point later sent notification letters to over 160,000 people. In January 2006, the FTC, or Federal Trade Commission, investigated Choice Point. It alleged that Choice Point violated consumer privacy rights, it also charged the company with violating federal laws. Choice Point settled with the FTC in December of that year and it paid $10 million in civil fines. The Choice Point data breach is unique because it spurred the creation of data breach notification laws in many states. If it wasn't for the California breach notification law, Choice Point might not have notified any consumers at all about the data breach. Other states realized that the residents might not be able to protect themselves from identity theft and similar situation without these laws. 35 states Consider breach notification laws in 2005. The choice point law is widely seen as the reason why other states have these laws. So the California notification law. California was the first state to have a breach notification law. It required businesses to notify their customers if they suffered a data breach that disclosed personal data. Many states have modeled their own breach notification laws on the California law. This section will discuss the California breach notification law. So the California breach notification law. California's Database Security Breach Notification Act law went into effect January 1, 2003. The California legislature created a law after a security breach at state-operated data facility. The legislature recognized that identity theft was one of the fastest growing crimes in California. It stated that people must act quickly to limit the harm caused by identity theft. The purpose of the law was to give California residents timely information so that they can protect themselves. The law applies to anyone who owns or uses computerized data that contains the unencrypted personal information of a California resident. Applies to state agencies, nonprofit organizations, private organizations, and businesses. It also can apply to businesses that aren't actually located in California. It covers any entity that stores the personal information of a California resident. Under the law, an entity must notify California residents of a breach of its computer systems. It must give Notice if unauthorized individuals access and take the residents' unencrypted data. The law defines personal information very broadly. It's information that allows a person to be identified. Personal information is a person's first name, first initial, and last name. A person's name is combined with any of the following social security number, driver's license number or California identification card number, account number or credit card or debit card account, medical information, and health insurance information. The law requires entities to notify California residents whenever a security breach occurs. It must also notify residents if they reason reasonably believe that a breach has occurred. So again, for the California notification law, who must comply includes state agencies, nonprofit organizations, private organizations, businesses, and any entity storing information on a California resident. So data breach notification laws. California law doesn't assess assessed any penalties against 
an entity that doesn't follow the notification law. However, it does allow a person a private cause of action against those entities. People can sue the private entity for any damages that they have because they didn't receive notification in a timely manner. Some states, such as Alaska, Maryland, and Alaska allow a private cause of action, but some states don't. The states that don't are generally seeking to protect the entity's business. They also do this to protect the court system. It could be burdensome to the court system to process many individual cases. Instead, most of these states allow the state attorney general to pursue an action against an e-entity for failure to give notification. These states include Iowa, Iowa, Michigan, and Oklahoma. Almost every state now has a breach notification law to protect its residents. The laws have some similarities. Some laws also have unique requirements. These laws can be very confusing to businesses that operate in a number of states. Breaches of these entities are almost certainly going to affect people in many states. If this happens, an entity will have to review the laws of several states to properly notify people about the breach. The California law provides an encryption, encryption safe harbor. Entities don't need to give notice of a breach if the personal information in their computer system was encrypted. California law doesn't specify the lowest level encryption needed to use the safe harbor. It also doesn't reference any industry standards. Most other states also provide an encryption safe harbor. Some states also specify the encryption standards required to take advantage of the safe harbor. For instance, Indiana provides an encryption safe harbor. This law says that data is encrypted if it's changed by, by an, a logarithm process. It must be changed into a form that is unreadable without the use of a confidential process or key. Breach notification is hard for entities because states have different laws about what constitutes a breach. An incident can be a breach in one state, but not another. It also can be hard if entities must give notice in a certain way or within a certain time. Different penalties for non-compliance may also be a problem, since the laws all have different nuances. It may not be enough for an entity to comply with the laws of its own state. The lack of uniformity among states may place additional burdens on businesses that experience a security breach. People also may be confused if they get notices that don't look similar. Notices might look different depending upon the law and the entity following, followed in creating the notice. Data-specific security and privacy regulations. Some states have started to create laws that require entities in the state to comply with industry security standards. Minnesota and Nevada have created laws that require businesses operating in those states to comply with parts of the payment card industry, PCI, Data Security Standard, DSS. Minnesota created the first state law that attempted to codify certain parts of the PCI DSS. This law is called the Plastic Card Security Act. It was effective August of 2007. It forbids businesses from storing credit card information for more than 48 hours after the credit card transaction is approved. Information that can't be stored includes the card's verification number, PIN number, and contents of the card magnetic strip. Nevada is the first state to make following the entire PCI DSS state law requirement. In 2009, the Nevada legislature modified the state's security of personal information law. 
law had been in effect since 2005. Law requires protection of personal information in a number of ways. The 2009 changes to the law added the PCI DSS language. These changes were proposed in the Nevada Senate, Senate bill. Law now requires businesses to follow the PCI DSS and went into effect January 1st, 2010. The Nevada law applies to data collectors. Data collectors are state agencies, financial institutions, and businesses that handle personal information. Some states have created laws protecting Social Security numbers, or SSN. These laws recognize that Social Security numbers are highly sensitive pieces of information. A Social Security number can be very valuable to identity theft. Thief. Thieves can use the number to easily establish new identities to commit identity theft crimes. Indiana has laws designed to protect Social Security numbers. Its laws forbid Social Security numbers from appearing in public documents. It also has laws that forbid state agencies from disclosing a person's Social Security number to any other person or entity. Some states require entities doing business within the state to follow basic information security practices. These practices protect the security and privacy of data. Other states are more aggressive. They require entities to use specific security practices, such as encryption. Massachusetts has created some of the nation's most rigorous data protection laws. It created its breach notification law in 2007. That law also requires the state's Consumer Affairs Department to issue standards for protection of personal information. Law stated that standards should, number one, protect the security and confidentiality of personal information consistent with industry standards, should also protect against anticipated threats to security or integrity of personal information and protect against unauthorized access to or use of personal information that could harm a person. The Massachusetts Standards for the Protection of Personal Information of Residents of the Commonwealth was released in September 2008. It originally was scheduled to take effect January 1, 2009. State pushed back compliance to March 1, 2010. It did this in response to public comments on the regulations. The state released the final version of the standard in August of 2009. Nevada law also has encryption requirements. This law has had encryption rules since 2008. They were strengthened in 2009 as part of the Nevada Senate bill. The same bill requires data collectors in the state to follow the PCI DSS. The PCI DSS portion of the bill was discussed earlier in the chapter, and that's for the credit card um, protection of information. Nevada law requires data collectors to use encryption if they are transmitting personal information outside of their business network. You must encrypt the data if it's sent externally via email or any other in electronic transmission. This requirement helps protect data while it's being transferred from one entity to another. The Nevada law excludes facsimiles from the transmission encryption requirements. As of January 2014, almost 30 states have created data disposal laws. They have created these laws to make sure that personal information is properly disposed of. Personal data must be protected throughout the, its life cycle. This includes disposal of information in an appropriate way. Washington State created its personal data disposal law in 2002. In, creative, in creating the law, the state legislature made comments about how important the law was. 
It said that careless disposal of personal information creates a significant risk of identity theft. Improper disposal threatens a person's privacy and financial security. Anyone in the state has a duty to dispose properly of personal information. Washington Disposal Law applies to any person or entity in the state. It requires an entity to take reasonable steps to destroy records that contain health and financial data when it determines that it no longer needs these records. Law requires entities to properly destroy information held in their records. Records are defined as any material that holds information, it includes paper or electronic materials. Entities must make sure that they destroy any personal financial or health information in their records. Personal financial and health information is data that identifies a person and is commonly used for financial or health care reasons. On the other side of the country, New York State also has a data disposal law. This law states that no person or business may dispose of a record containing personal identifying information without shredding, destroying, or modifying it so that the information is no longer readable. Law requires that any person or business destroying the records must take action that is consistent with the commonly accepted industry practices. They must use these practices to make sure that no unauthorized person has access to information in the record. Under the New York law, records are any information held in any physical form. They can be in paper or electronic. They include reports, letters, and computer tapes. Any type of data stored, storage medium is a record. Personal identifying information is information in a record that identifies a person by name and includes any of the following. Social security number, driver's license number or identification card number, mother's maiden name, financial account numbers or code, or any other identifying number. So this chapter reviews state laws that protect data. States have been very active in trying to protect personal data of their residents. They've created many different laws to protect security and privacy of this information. They've created these laws because there's no one comprehensive federal data privacy or security law. When reviewing state laws that protect certain types of data, it's important for you to think about what other state or federal laws might also protect the data. Thank you.